We're only 24. Um, yeah, Bitcoin's been pretty quiet uh, after this breakout that we had yesterday. We have just been trading within a range here. So if we do have a look at the range, I'm going to keep this stuff on my chart. I know it makes it a little bit um, messy when we're doing these zoomed out views. But where we are within this range, holding uh, back inside the value area low of our range. So of course, last week we did have that breakdown. All right, we got that consolidation outside of value area. We have since then broken back into value area. And as long as this can continue to hold, then we are looking for that move back up. That kind of mean reversion trade, okay? We had a very long, bloody, nasty move down over the past few weeks. And just to come back with imbalance here, we are at a high volume node, okay? This was a point of control previously. If we do have a look at where our developing POC was, it was down here at some stage, okay? That's where we're rejecting from. There is volume here. So we're gonna need a bit of volume to push through it in the same way that we needed a bit of volume to push through uh, the levels that we had last week, okay? Um, but if we can do that, then I think a move back up to the POC is still something that I myself am looking for uh, on the within this range as a whole. So looking for longs around those range lows back into the point of control, even if that does then lead to another move back down again here uh, that is from the range perspective and on the daily time frame is more so what I'm looking at uh, at this stage however <coughs> it is kind of 50 50 if we go down to the four hour we can see that we are still in this downtrend on the four hour here with there just basically being all the way since the 7th of June so almost a month now <coughs> we've been in this just uh, just complete downtrend and um, without any breaks of this in any way where we have a high, low, high, low, high, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, lower, low. That was the expansive move that we saw to the downside. This was all just very much a slow grind, slow grind, slow grind. Then we had that expansive move to the downside where you broke away from where this basically fair value was, where we had this trend, broke outside of that. And now we're seeing this this almost acting as like a bump. And now we're looking to to run back in the other direction here. However, we are still at this stage with this being here, the high that then took out the low. We are still below that at this stage, forming another lower high that could lead us to another expansive move to the downside. However, on, on the plus, on the positive here, we have slowed that momentum. So once you get that expansive move, it is natural to expect a reversion back into where we have some fair value within this. And as we've seen on the range and within all of this, this is leading us to, to an expectation that we can um, see a move back up towards that 66 to 67 K area here. Now it is actually pretty straightforward um, when you zoom in a little bit more and you just take things level to level here is that we're using these four hour gaps basically as just stepping stones for where price is. So once you break, once you come into one of these four hour gaps where we have imbalance on the chart, we are looking at that as areas to take short. So anything that is above, we are looking at those as zones to take shorts. Anything that is below, they are zones in which to take longs. So what we saw last week was we had this range that formed between a monthly level and there were single prints down here as well uh, between the monthly level and this four hour gap. All right, where we have that expansive move down, you have an impulse down uh, showing that it's, it's sellers that were taking the initiative. Sellers still in control here, forcing price lower, forcing price lower, but unable to break below that low uh, that we put in on the Monday. And then once you break through it, it goes to the next level very, very quickly. Okay, you get that impulse through over a weekend which is something that we had spoken about. So I did a tweet on this um, last week saying that I was expecting this to remain, ra remain range bound for the remainder of the week and then to break through it on the Sunday uh, or over the weekend when books are thinner, when it's easier to do these moves. I think it's probably a similar situation this week. Maybe even we could be expecting a move like uh on thursday because that essentially is like weekend price action with it being a bank holiday in america um so that could be something interesting to 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 be aware of if we are going to see a break out either above or below this current range then maybe we're looking at thursday as being that um where we have those thinner books and it's easier to push price through areas of high volume which is what we have here just a little thought off the top of my head there um <clears throat> But yeah, we're just taking it level to level. So 
as long as this zone here, you can see where we broke through, you impulse through that, you create another gap where there's imbalance. And so far on two occasions, okay, we swept into those single prints yesterday, had a move which then took the highs. And then this morning, okay, we have had this move to take out the Monday lows. And that does give us a nice trade setup here, where essentially you've taken out the Monday lows, you've had that swing failure pattern of there, and that gives you a trade searching for those Monday highs. So you've got a decent 6R trade here right at the start of the day. Now, what I would like to see as more confirmation essentially is to flip that monthly open back into support, start to hold, and then we can have a, a higher probability that this is, is going to play out and we're going to be looking for a move back up. Just like I say, trading level to level, using this as your area of support, using this as your area of resistance, okay, and taking it from there. Now, if we are to break any higher than this, let's say if we go to Monday high, and we start to close candles above that 63,900, 64K area, then I do believe we can see a very quick move to take out these weekend poor highs that we have from, from back at the end of June, that Saturday and Sunday, 22nd to 23rd of June, where we have two poor highs, equal highs over here. And um, that is where I have another, another alert. That is where our nearest essentially liquidity above us is at this stage. You can see that we've had this bounce, we've taken out these highs, you've got these little internal highs here, but where we have significant liquidity is up there at 64,500. That would be the next level. And then what we would essentially be looking for is to take those and then to probably, like we're seeing now, start to trade within a range where we have, again, imbalance. You trade from balance to imbalance, all right? We are creating an area of balance between two areas of imbalance, and then that's likely what we would see again, and you continue to step it up in that kind of manner. Now, if we were to lose this area, then that takes you down to, once again, we've found balance here. And if we were to lose that, then for me, that likely leads to a move back down to 61K, where you have some equal lows down here, okay? And then you've got this area of single prints here, um, 61 to 61, 200 would be the next level below. So I am still, for myself, taking it level to level, um, looking at each of these gaps on the chart, each of these areas of imbalance to, to take trades from, and then targeting liquidity um, from, from there, essentially. Now, if we have a look at, we do have some additional confluence here, uh, with some of these levels above. I believe if I turn my view apps on, then quite interesting because of course we do have a new weekly, monthly and quarterly view app. Now our previous quarterly view app is really interesting. So if we are to break higher and we go towards this 65,500 area where I, I think we could put in another range up here, then you do have that previous quarterly view app close up here, which um, these these view app closes often acting as nice like nice levels in 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 which to get a reaction from. <clears throat> and then if we look at the monthly, there is that monthly one just above. Okay, and um, of course we have seen previously that that the yearly view app acting as support on a couple of occasions. So that quarterly view up close, something that I'm aware of, which is just sat at 65,500 at the moment um, with the monthly just above and so on. There's also the, the weekly, a, a naked weekly view up close just below that point. So very interesting there on the view apps. Um, and that gives you, again, more confluence around this, this next level that we have here. <coughs> Uh, anything else from this chart that we want to be looking at? I don't think there is. I, like for me, it's just very kind of straightforward and simple. Um, looking at the market structure, looking at where there's balance, looking at where there's imbalance. So you're just you're just taking these gaps, taking these points of control, and just finding the levels from there, and just using them as little steps uh, in which to to move higher. So if we break through here, we likely trade within here if you break through here then we're into the point of control maybe that acts as support and then from that point onwards there's not really any imbalance you'd be looking to trade through and squeeze shorts at that stage afterwards so any break above 67 would be considered very bullish um, because you're essentially going towards all-time highs i think again at that stage so i think that's unlikely but a, a move towards 67 i i do believe that we can still see um 
some other things to be aware of, I think, on here is the CME gap. So once again, when I when I did this tweet last week, and I can bring it up, let me try and find it quickly. Uh, do, 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 do. I posted this yesterday. It's just over here. Let's bring it up on the screen. Um, I had my little, there we go. So this was essentially what we were looking for. Was that quiet Thursday, Friday holding month level was staying outside of range rally area low. That's what happened. Weekend pump to take out Monday highs, give people a CME gap to temp shorts and then potentially squeeze 267K uh, here. So this was is what we've seen so far. And as we can see here, we do have that CME gap. Uh, people are talking about that, especially as we start to get this move down. Are we going to see people starting to short into support? expecting that this CME gap to be filled and then it doesn't. Quite often when we do see these these reversals in trend, they do coincide with gaps as well. When you get these like little breakouts, they do quite often coincide with gaps, especially when you're an at an extreme in sentiment. Okay, these do quite often happen, but something else to be aware of. And again, that gives us those levels lower down if we are to start to break down from this area. But whilst it's still acting as support, then you still just need to be looking for longs from this very zone we're in with these single prints here. Um, for the, when we go over to this chart, then ETFs uh, were pretty pretty flat again yesterday. Have I refreshed that? I'm not sure if I have. Yeah, I had refreshed it. So it had some inflows yesterday. That's natural. Okay, we had to move up. Uh, news today is pretty much like we do have um, uh, a couple of news events to be aware of. I should have done this at the beginning of the video. <laughs> this is why I'm going to bring out my Notion, my Notion uh, template soon because news gets done at the beginning often. Um, but yeah, we do have some news today where we do have Powell speaking at the... Um, uh, the ECB conference or something like that. And we do have job openings later on. Then we've got unemployment and some FOMC minutes tomorrow. Then of course it is a bank holiday on Thursday. And then we've got what would usually happen on the Thursday with your unemployment rates and everything. Those being shifted to the Wednesday and the Friday here because of that bank holiday um, on Thursday. So yeah, very interesting. You've got parliamentary elections in the UK on 4th of July also. So that could be a, a, a potential market mover for the markets that are open um, with some some quite significant stuff happening here in the UK and also it being a, a, where we have lower liquidity there from the US. Now, looking at this, is there anything to really note on the CVD this morning? Uh, we've made a new lower low, so that's not really going to be, well, not a lower low. I mean, we've swept lows. Uh, nothing too interesting here. Okay, CVD just following price, essentially. We have seen that with both spot and perps, we are getting those divergences here where price has taken out the low, but we're not really seeing that it's it's an aggressive move in any way. It's still holding quite well, and, and that could lead us to, to the expectation that we still see higher prices here. Uh, if we go over onto this chart, oh my God, why does everything go like that? I'm just going to leave that chart and leave the other one. We know that there's a spot premium. And we know also that open interest right now uh, within this range is relatively flat. From the TPO, and we'll just load this one up here. We can see once again here, uh, Monday lows having been swept. And then we have our Monday highs over here. There is an NPOC, so you do have this weekend point of control. There is the volume and time point of control there at 61,600 from the Sunday. And there is then if you combine these two days together, then it does give you a 61K uh, basically weekend NPOC. So that is something to be aware of now. Of course, if we go back and look at our main chart, then 61K here is the next area that we do have marked as being like significant support here. So if this does break down and we do lose the single prints, then 61K is what we're looking for. Otherwise, right? keep trading this range and expect higher prices is what I'm saying. So we're looking at this as support 
looking to take Monday highs. If we can close above Monday highs, expect higher prices. And that gives us the target of those weekend highs from the 22nd, 22nd and 23rd of June and the 65,500 where we've got some areas of confluence there. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to wrap it up there. That's everything I really have to say. Um, if there's any questions, if there's anything uh, you want to know, please comment below. Like, subscribe if you've not done so already. I'm going to continue on with the stream. Remember, uh, I do these videos as part of a live stream every single morning. So if you want to ask further questions after this video, um, then make sure you're just watching it live and then I can cover everything afterwards. So thanks for watching. I will see you again very soon tomorrow. And yeah, have a great day. Cheers. Bye-bye.